Hello everybody, it's Kara from Wild Book Garden, and today I'm here with my favorite historical fiction books of 2022. Uh, as you guys have seen, I'm splitting up my favorites by genre because I've read so many books. So these are going to be the historical fiction books that I read this last year that are my favorites. Um, not all of these came out in that year. I think actually most of them didn't. Um, and actually, unusually for me, this is I think actually in ascending star order. Um, so I have one four star, two four and a half stars, and then the rest, no wait, three, four and a half stars, and the rest are five stars. Uh, so let's just get into it. Um, starting off, this one might be partly due to recency bias because I just read this, but Jazz Owls, A Novel of the Zoot Suit Riots by Margarita Engel, art by Rudy Gutierrez. This is a very short novel in verse, and this has been my favorite that I, my favorite thing I've read from Margarita Engel so far, by far. This is about a historical event that I didn't know about, where a bunch of white Navy sailors who were on shore leave during World War II um, beat up and like in some cases killed a bunch of Latin American men, I believe they were specifically Mexican men, and um, like kids in some cases, and this was like branded as like the zoot suit riots because these boys were wearing things called zoot suits and it was kind of a way to frame it as like the boys were making trouble and the sailors just got a little carried away um which is obviously not what happened and i just thought this was really well written um in margarita Engel's other books i've read there's been places that i really love her verse and places that I think weren't as well done, but this was consistently good throughout. The only thing I didn't love about the writing is I feel like there was an over-reliance on capital letters, <laughs> um, like certain words or phrases being in all caps in a way that I found kind of distracting, um, which is why it's like a little lower on this list, but I still think this was brilliantly written. I think for such a short book, we still get a pretty good sense of the characters. Um, I thought as a historical piece, this was very interesting and informative. And I also think the way it talks about race in this period was very interesting. I mentioned in my wrap up how one of the things this book deals with is the like meaninglessness basically of the category of whiteness. So like Latin American women, for example, were not considered white in terms of like other white people, the way they were treated. Uh, but when it came to anti-miscegenation laws, they were. So like there's a character here who is in love with a black Latin American man and she can't marry him because that would go against these laws. Um, so I just really enjoyed this. I would definitely recommend this. I mean, obviously it's in my favorites video. Uh, then I have Ariadne by Jennifer Saint. I finally read this and I'm so glad I did. Um, this is a female centered retelling of the story of Ariadne and the labyrinth, Theseus and the Minotaur, whatever you want to call it. Um, and we actually get, like, there's like the beginning part where we set up the labyrinth and then we have Ariadne helping Theseus escape the labyrinth and kill the Minotaur. And then we have a lot of the book actually that takes place afterwards. And we also follow Ariadne's sister Phaedra. And I just thought this was so well written. I love the things that this book says about women and women in history and stories and um, like who pays the price for men's choices. Like I just found this very thoughtful. Um, <laughs> I will keep saying this, this book does what the silence of the girls thinks it does. <laughs> um, I just think this is a great example of a female-centered retelling that is actually feminist um, in the way that it is written and the way it handles its female characters, even though they are not, like bad things happen to women in this book, but the way it is done is still in a feminist context or a feminist book, if that makes sense. Um, I also found the incorporation of the mythology here really, really well done, really interesting. Um, I liked the writing itself. Again, the characterization was fantastic. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm fully on board the Jennifer Saint train. Then I have Rondo Allegro by Sherwood Smith. Um, this is like kind of a long-ish book, but I just found it so compelling. I know I love the way that Sherwood Smith writes, and this is a great example of that. Um, I love her characterization as well. This book is set in 1799, and we follow a couple of main characters with some other perspectives occasionally as well, um, but our main characters are Anna Maria and Henry Duncannon. And Anna Maria is living in Italy, I think, at the beginning. Yeah, she's in Palermo, and her dying father arranges for her to marry uh, Captain Duncannon, Henry Henry Duncannon um, in order to kind of protect her because like the French are invading and there's like a lot of chaos and her father wants her to be taken care of and if she's married to a British captain she has a better chance at that. Um, so they're married and then he is immediately called off to battle and so they like don't see each other again for like years. I keep saying Anna Maria, I think she goes by Anna for most of it. She ends up joining a couple of opera companies um, eventually because of course she's a well-bred young lady and she's not supposed to do that, but she and her maid have to support themselves. Um, and I really loved the friendship with her maid by the way as well and the way that like it acknowledged the class difference, but it's like it's clear that 
she's basically a mother figure for Anna at this point and I really love that. So we see Anna just like grow in her confidence. Um, like she realizes that she's a good singer but she's not a fantastic singer um, and I thought that was a really interesting take as well. Um, but she is kind of like just becoming more sure of herself, making more of a life for herself and then her and Henry's paths cross again years later and it's about them getting to know each other again, uh, maybe finding love, of course finding love. Um, and I just really love this. Like I said, I love the characters, I love the relationship. I found this book very compelling because I just like the way that Sherwood Smith like writes characters and stories and relationships. Um, I also found it interesting that like there were a couple of big like changes in setting where as soon as it happened I was like wait no <laughs> I don't want to do this I like the other part of the book more but then she won me over um like we actually end up spending a lot of time with Henry's family and I thought that was really interesting um I love the historical aspects of this and the way that this book communicates so clearly like the uncertainty of this period like never knowing which army had control of the land you were on at the moment or like um if it was good or bad to be French or English or Italian or anything um I just found that super interesting and I also really appreciated that this is a historical fiction book that I think handles feminist issues in like really just thoughtful ways, like ways that work for a modern audience but that also fit in with how characters would have lived and thought. Do you know what I mean? Um, not that that always has to be the case but I do think this book is a good example of that. So yeah, love this one. I think more people should read it. And then my last four and a half star um, is a really interesting <laughs> backstory. So you guys know that I don't read a ton of World War II historical fiction. It's just not something I pick up a lot. Um, but this year is unusual because I have three books that were World War II historical fiction or set directly after that and they're all on this favorites list um, which I think is just pretty unusual. Um, so I have The Guernsey Literary and Potato Peel Pie Society by Mary Ann Schaefer and Annie Barrows. This is pretty short and this is epistolary. This is um, a pretty well-known book. It's also been made into a movie which I still need to see and this is one of the books that is set in the aftermath of World War II. Um, so Juliet Ashton is a writer for like a magazine or a newspaper and um, she ends up getting interested in the isle, the island of Guernsey and this thing called the Guernsey Literary and Potato Peel Pie Society. So she starts writing them Letters and like asking them about like what things were like during the war, like why this club was formed and um, she ends up becoming very close to these people who write letters to her who live on this island. This book is a lot about like obviously the aftermath of war and trauma and grief um, but also about community and love and the power of literature and storytelling. Like there are like multiple lines in this about books that just like got me so choked up. Like it just, it was very emotional because they rang so true at like the way that like stories can give us solace and give us courage. I grew really attached to these characters on the island um, just like Juliet did. I enjoyed the writing style itself. It's like Juliet is like a very like funny and wry and clever person but she's also got a very warm heart and I really loved that. I also really love that um, this book is very very much a celebration of like bravery and kindness and brilliance of ordinary people and ordinary lives um, which is something you guys know I love and I also like how that connected with the focus on storytelling because um, like this book is so like anti-reading snobbery and I love it. <laughs> I love that so much. So this is one of the books that is like kind of teetering on the edge for me of like maybe this is a five star because I did really really love this. Um, but my first official five star, at least at the time I'm filming this, is Bloomsbury Girls by Natalie Jenner. Um, this is one I actually got as an arc in exchange for an honest review which I will link if you want more thoughts but uh, obviously I loved this. Um, this is another post-World War II book and specifically we are following three women who all end up working at the same bookstore. Um, Bloomsbury books and it's about their kind of experiences in the workplace. This book talks a lot about what it was like for working women at the time. Um, this book also obviously deals a lot with the aftermath of the war and how obviously these things are still very present and still affecting people. I love the female friendship in this book. One of my favorite things about it is that there is no girl on girl hate at any point in the story. Like there are female characters who are closer to each other than others but at, at no point in the story is there a moment where like we have to, you know, like defeat like the mean girl or something where there's like a woman who's um, like getting in the other girl's way or something which not that there can't be conflict between female characters but I really appreciate that we some like that we finally got a story where that's like not a thing. I feel like this book really goes against the stereotype that like women are really catty, like are just more catty than other people. Um, so I loved that. I love the way this book talks about female authors and like the canon, you know, and what that means. Um, one of our main characters actually is 
trying to track down a manuscript that is really important for that reason. I also really really loved the cameos from like famous people or historical figures of the time. That's something that I don't, I don't know, I, I don't like often enjoy that or I don't get excited about that in books. Like it's not like a draw of historical fiction for me usually, but there are times where it's done just so well and so naturally that I just really love it and that's what happened here. Um, yeah, very complicated relationships. I really loved these characters. I think this book has a lot of really thoughtful things to say about issues of the time, but that are also reflected in some things happening today. I love this. Highly recommend. So my third favorite historical fiction book is Jefferson's Sons by Kimberly Brubaker Bradley. Um, the reason I finally have a copy, like I read this from my library, this book is very famously out of print, uh, which is frustrating because she's a very popular author. Like you'd think that they would reprint it at some point, but my wonderful friend Kelly from Cozy Reader Kelly surprised me with this for Christmas, so thank you so much Kelly. Uh, this is obviously one of my favorites. Um, this is a historical fiction obviously, and it is set um, during the Civil War, and we are following um, several children of Thomas Jefferson, who he had with his slave Sally Hemings, which is obviously by definition a non-consensual relationship, um, and then we also follow a child who's connected to the family. This book is like absolutely gut-wrenching. I found it so well written, I really got so attached to these characters, and I feel like this book does a great job of showing how, like, yeah, they in some ways these kids got like special treatment, but they were still enslaved and by their father no less. Like I just, this book just is so immediate. I feel like Kimberly Brubaker Bradley balances the historical aspects and the characterization and the like emotional impact of this story really really well. Um, I do want to make a point of looking into Own Voices reviewers, like if um, if I can find reviewers by like black readers I'd be very interested to read those because um, Brubaker Bradley is a white woman so um, that is something just to know, like you know don't pick this book up for Black History Month, that kind of thing. I did just want to mention that. Uh, I had a really hard time ranking these like top three so as I always say, you know, on any given day that the order could be different. Um, but my second favorite historical fiction is A Single Thread of Moonlight by Laura Wood. Um, as you guys might know I've had kind of mixed experiences with Laura Wood because I loved one of her books, hated another book, and now I loved this one again. So overall really enjoying her as an author. But um, this is a very loose Cinderella retelling. Um, we're following our main character Iris Grey who ran away from her family after her father died and her stepmother and stepsisters took over. Um, and now she's at a point where she basically has to figure out a way to claim her inheritance before I think she's like about to be legally declared dead because she's been missing so long um, and she wants to obviously get her inheritance back and get like her family home back and everything um, and a man named Nicholas Winter shows up and he's like hey I can help you we both want kind of the same things and at first she's like uh <laughs> I don't really trust you what are you talking about but eventually they do end up teaming up because he has reasons of his own for um, wanting to bring down some people connected to Iris's family or uh, like this house party that they're going to and I just I love this so much. I really liked our main characters. I loved the romance in this book. It also had a couple of my favorite romance tropes of all time. <laughs> so that was fun. I didn't realize that going in. So that was just like such a good surprise. Um, and I also think that even though this is like a very like fun and enjoyable and engaging book, it does also have these deeper themes and deeper ideas um, like about grief and about like learning more about people you care about. Also I adored the focus on consent in this book and like why, like just the way that was shown uh, just makes me so happy. I also think it's funny that in both books that I've loved from this author I start out and the male lead I'm like I don't like you and then by the end of the book I'm like I love you and I don't want anything bad to happen to you. So that's pretty impressive. I liked that character development and how it was kind of like Iris and the reader was like getting to understand him better. Um, yeah just this book made me so happy. Like again there were like some more emotional or sad moments but overall this is just a book that I I loved that like had some of my favorite things that put a smile on my face. Um, I just really loved it. I think Laura Wood is a pretty underhyped historical fiction author and I would definitely recommend this book as well as A Sky Painted Gold. And then finally my favorite historical fiction book that I read in 2022 is actually a repeat author um, and that is The War I Finally Won by Kimberly Brubaker Bradley. This is the concluding book in the duology. I read the first one and I really enjoyed it but um, when I read this second book I was like oh okay I understand why this is like a favorite series for people. Um, this book just... Uh, 
went above and beyond. Like, I knew it was going to be emotional, I knew it was going to be powerful and well-written and compelling, but it was just so much more of all those things than I thought. Um, this book is actually set during World War II, so um, by the way, I will put content warnings for all these books in the description, I should have mentioned that. Um, but yeah, this followed the events of the first book. I don't want to give too detailed of a summary because that will give away things from the first book, but this book continues to deal with war and the costs of war um, with family and like the messiness of that. The first book starts with um, them being taken in by a woman named Susan who did not like agree <laughs> to like help, you know, foster or take care of children during the war, but she finds herself in that position and I love her so much. Like Susan is truly one of the best fictional moms I have ever read. I love her so much. Um, and I, I really love these characters. I love the way this book talks about like language and um, like acceptance and love. And we also in this book have the introduction of Ruth, who is a young Jewish girl who is um, like being hosted by one of the families in this book. And um, I thought that added a really important dimension to the story. Um, I also really liked her as a character. I really liked seeing her and Ada's friendship grow. I just thought this was an incredibly well-written and thoughtful and compassionate, moving, smart conclusion to this series and just like thematically what it does. I love the character development. Um, so many parts of this book just like really got to me in my heart. Uh, I loved it. So it had to be number one on my historical fiction list for 2022. So those are my favorite historical fictions of the year. Uh, please comment down below. Let me know if you have read any of these and loved them or if you're going to pick them up. Yeah, pretty good year for historical fiction, I think. And let me know, obviously, a historical fiction book that you read and that you enjoyed. Um, I know it's like not a genre that everyone enjoys, but I love it. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you soon with another video, and I hope you love the next book you read. Bye!